Welcome to prayer meeting. Our devotional thought is real wisdom, and we'll be looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. Paul, writing to the church of Corinth here, verse 1, he writes, And I, brethren, when I came to you, did not come with excellent of speech or of wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. In this verse, Paul continues his thought on the message of the cross being the power of God. In this verse, he applies what he said in verse 26 of the first chapter to himself. He said, there are not many wise according to the flesh are called. So, in spite of his education, and in spite of his natural abilities, he does not consider any of that to be real wisdom. So whatever ability in teaching the gospel he might have had, that came from God through his personal experience with the message of the cross. Then in verse 27 of that chapter, he contrasts what the world thinks is wisdom with what God says is wisdom. Now the world thinks God's wisdom is foolishness. And the world thinks the things of God, that is the message of the cross, are a weak thing. To the world, the things of God are useless and are considered only to be a crutch for the mindless. But from the viewpoint of truth, the world is foolish and mindless. Their perverted wisdom is their crutch. Paul was on a mission when he came to Corinth, and that mission was not to impress people with any kind of persuasive rhetoric. His message was simply to present the gospel of salvation from sin to them. In other words, the message of the cross. Then going on in verse 2, he says, For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. So in bringing the gospel to the Corinthians, Paul was determined not to be influenced by anyone in the church. The status, wealth, reputations, or religious professions of the people made no impression on him. Well, how many of us can say the same thing? All too often people, and even ministers, are influenced by such things uh, rather than seeking the true spiritual condition of the people they deal with. All Paul wanted to see was the results of the atonement and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in the lives of the people. Verses 3 to 5, he says, I was with you in weakness, in fear, and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Paul wanted people to meet God and not just be to be influenced by his own preaching. His concern was for the people to have real experiences with God that resulted in holy lives that were made possible to them only by the Holy Spirit. He intended their faith to be based in the experienced power of God not the power of his preaching. And then verses 6 through 12. There's a long passage here. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age, who are coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew. For had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, eyes not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God, for what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God 
except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. The short version of what Paul says here is that spiritual maturity is seen not in how long a person has been associated with the church, but in how much of the power of God is evident in his life. So how much of God's power is evident in your life? I don't care if you've been with the church 50, 60 years, how much of God's power is evident in your life, okay? Spiritual maturity is not a matter of religion. It is a matter of divine revelation. And Paul quotes from Isaiah 64, verse 4, to support his assertion. Remember, it says, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. That's powerful language. The Living Bible puts what Paul wrote in more modern language, maybe a little more easy to understand. So they say that is what is meant by the scriptures, which say that no mere man has ever seen, heard, or even imagined what wonderful things God has ready for those who love the Lord. But we know about these things because God has sent his spirit to tell us and his spirit searches out and shows us all of God's deepest secrets. I like that, that's, that's pretty clear. And I think that really helps us to understand what Isaiah was writing there. As those saved from sin, we know and understand what the world cannot comprehend. Now, this is not that we are any smarter than the world, it is because the Holy Spirit has shown us the truth the world rejects as foolishness. The gospel is real wisdom. If you will let him, God will gladly teach you all that he wants you to know. You do not need a high school education to understand God, what God has for you. You don't need a college or Bible school degree to understand what God has for you. You do not even need a high IQ to understand what God has for you. You just need to give your heart and life to him and he will give you the Holy Spirit who will show you all you need to know. This, my friend, is real wisdom. So how wise are you? Are you wiser than the world around you? I hope so. Amen.